Hello and welcome back to the Stevenson Weekender sailboat build. In this episode I'm going to be building all the spars for the boat. The mast is the most substantial of the spars and it starts out as this uh, heavy 4x8 piece of Douglas fir. This is a very straight and clear piece of lumber but to take out any uh, bend in the board I'm going to split it down the middle using a chalk line. All the subsequent cuts will be made using this straight uh, line as a reference so that I'll end up with a mast as straight as possible. I saw it doesn't cut deep enough to get the cut completed all in one pass so I had to cut from both sides and then I came back with a square and a hand plane and fine-tuned everything to make sure the two edges were square. My goal was to end up with two straight pieces that were three and a half inches by three and a half inches square. I had to make a new stand for my planer so that these heavy boards would end up out feeding onto my table saw and, and assembly table. I made the planer stand out of scrap material that I had laying around and I made a short video about that that you can find on my channel if you're interested in how I But after I had passed the material through the planer several times, I ended up with two pieces that were uh, square and just the dimension that I need to start the mast. I'll begin by getting the two pieces cut to length. This mast has a hinge design so that the mast can be folded down when it's on the trailer. My original 4x8 beam was only 12 foot long, but the mast itself needs to be 15 feet long. So I made my cuts so that the uh, split would be where the hinge of the mast is going to end up. The mast is tapered, so I needed to reassemble the total length of the mast at the full 15 feet so I could cut the taper into it. We're going to join the two halves together with wooden dowels that I can then cut later once I'm ready to split the two halves apart again. First I drilled some random uh, dowel locations in the one piece and then used that little center punch dowel marker to mark the other piece of lumber. Again, I'm going to join these two halves together temporarily so that I can work on it to get the taper cut in, but then I'll be able to easily cut through this glue and the dowels later on. The mast tapers from three and a half inches square uh, a few feet up from the bottom of the mast to two and a quarter inches at the top of the mast. First I will cut the left and right side pieces off of the taper and then I'll flip it 90 degrees and remark the taper and cut the top and bottom. So this process will leave me with a tapered square and I want to end up with a tapered round. So someone through the years came up with this device, it's called a spar maker's gauge. The dowels and the pencils there are set a specific 7-10-7 ratio. This gauge works by twisting the device so that the two dowels always stay in contact with the sides of the tapered square and then the pencils mark where I need to make my 45 degree cuts so that this square will end up being a 8 sided octagon and all the cut surfaces will end up being the same width. So here I am with the saw set at a 45 degree angle and I'm cutting along those pencil lines I just made. Then I just simply repeated that process, removing all four corners. Before I could move on to the next step in getting the mast round, I wanted to take care of this little detailed area at the bottom of the mast where it transitions from brown back into square. I 
had that complete, I could move back to changing this 8-sided mast to a 16-sided mast using the power planer. Once that's done, it's almost round and I was able to uh, work out any high points with the hand plane. Next I'll move on to getting it sanded. I threw together this uh, device that I saw online that uses a belt sander belt that's turned inside out. I will point out a tip here that the drum that's connected to the drill has to be bigger in diameter than any point on the mast so that the friction on the drum is more than the friction on the mast itself. Otherwise the sandpaper spins on the drum rather than the mast. I realized this the hard way, unfortunately. As mentioned previously, this is a uh, hinged mast design, so I'm going to modify this galvanized gate hinge to meet my needs. Because the mast is rounded, I was not able to utilize the full width of the hinge. plans call for insetting the barrel of the hinge and the hinge itself into the mast. During the process of rounding the mast I had left a flat area on this side. I wish I could say that was intentional. It was not. But it did end up leaving a nice flat spot that I could rest the base of my router on to cut these indentions. So now that everything is cut in and aligned, I can use the pull saw here to cut through those wooden dowels. So I'll leave the mast for now and use the remaining piece of that original 4x8 to make the bowsprit. For this piece, I needed to end up with a 2.5 by 2.5 inch square. So I cut that a little oversized on the table saw and then ran it through the planer to get down to the dimension I needed. Next I used uh, the table saw to cut a 45 degree bevel on each of the corners. I'm simply following the directions and the plans here. The plans also call for rounding off the last seven inches of the tip of the bowsprit. I'll use the table saw to cut in a quarter inch deep shoulder around the perimeter of the piece. I then use the same technique I did on the mast where I take the piece from four sides down to eight sides and then down to sixteen sides. I then finish up the round with sanding. After I had the cylinder round, I wanted to round off the tip of the bowsprit. I used this 45 degree chamfering bit in the palm router and then finished up the rounding with the rasp and the sandpaper. Next I'll move on to the boom. The plans call for a two inch round with no taper. So I started with a store bought 4x4. I had to search through almost the entire pile at the big box store to find this straight grained piece. But it still had quite a few knots that I had to strategically uh, work around and cut away. 
but once I had everything cut and run through the planer, I ended up with this piece that's exactly a two inch square. I'd searched the internet for a way to make this square into a round. I'd started out with a jig that was supposed to allow me to spin the square over the saw blade of the table saw to turn it round, but that didn't work. So I moved on to this uh, router bit that has a one inch radius. And this method worked beautifully. In order to connect the boom to the gooseneck fitting and the mast, I need to inlay a couple of stainless steel uh, flat bar pieces. So I've laid those pieces out on the boom and marked around them, and then I'm using the palm router again with the spiral bit in it to make the inlay. So after I did that on both sides, I need to get holes drilled through uh, to connect to each other. So I made this quick little jig that will allow me to drill through at a right angle. I can drill through about halfway from each side and then the, connect the holes. Now I'm going to move on to the gaff. I had these pieces of scrap mahogany from other parts of the boat. I had to get creative with the layout, both in the lengths of the pieces, but also there was two different tones in the color of the wood, so I arranged those in a pattern that would look nice. So after the glue had set on those pieces, I ran them through the joiner to get one square side and then ran through the uh, surface planer to get a parallel surface and the pieces down to the proper thickness. I was then able to lay out my pattern and trace around it for both sides and get that cut out on the bandsaw. Once I had the pieces cut out and sanded smooth, I rounded the edges with this 3 8 inch roundover bit. I used this 1.5 inch diameter cove bit to cut a concavity into the edge of the gaff jaws so that they'd meet up properly with the pole. This will all eventually get glued together but for now I'm just getting it temporarily put together with the stainless steel all thread that I'm going to mark and then cut to length. So the last thing I'm going to make in this video today is the bits that help hold the bowsprit onto the deck. I'll start out somewhat similar to the gaff jaws in that I'll glue up some pieces of mahogany. And once that glue has had time to set up, I'll run them through the joiner and then the surface planer. The 
bits are put together using half lap joints. Once I have all the half laps done, I'll cut things to length and then I'm going to turn the saw blade to 45 degrees and cut this uh, decorative detail on the end of each piece. This is how the bits will look when placed over the bowsprit and also have a couple little chocks that I made off camera there at the bottom. So after all that cutting and shaping we ended up with the mast and the boom and the bowsprit along with the bits and the little chocks that I would made to go with that and the gaff and then finally the jib club foot which is just a one inch round dowel that I bought off the shelf. Now before final install these pieces will have to be either varnished or painted but I will leave that for another video. So please join me next time as we continue with the Stevenson Weekender sailboat build.